everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a Nissan Armada mobile call, the V8, and the story with this thing is apparently it blew an oil line, the engine was covered in oil, the owner said that they pressure washed it, and now it's a no crank, no start. However, the starter sound light seems to click. It acts, it's acting like a dead battery or a very low battery. So on the meter here we have 11.9 volts which is you know, a little low with the key on. So let's crank it. See that number? 11.8 volts. Look at what the gauges are doing. <laughs> let's see key off. Back to normal. Okay. So since the battery voltage isn't dropping to, you know, less than like 11.9, that should be enough to crank the engine. Uh, what could cause a symptom? There isn't enough current going through the starter, the solenoid and the starter, to actually spin the engine over. Now, it seems like there's you know an oscillation, kind of like what you get with a, a really low battery. First the solenoid engages, it tries to spin the starter motor, there's too much current, and then the battery can't keep up, and then it drops out. So, in this case, it seems like the battery is okay, but there's a bad connection somewhere in that high current circuit, like a bad, maybe bad block ground. As you saw the the gauges were acting all weird. Alright, um, so let's check where the battery is grounded to the engine block and also the the positive connections, you know, at the starter solenoid, like the big cables. See if we find anything interesting. So the ground cable, this one right here, it's attached to the body right here and then there's a crimp and finally it's attached to the cylinder head right here this bolt so I'm gonna measure the voltage on the block it's a voltage drop on the ground side while we're cranking the engine see you see anything so what do we have there millivolts you know 50 millivolts not too bad so on the ground side a voltage drop Let's uh, turn the key. Six point eight volts DC right there. I'm holding it in the crank position. That's our problem. <laughs> Very cool. So what do we want to do here? Let's just loosen up this bolt. So right now there's a 6 volt difference between here and here. Now what we could do is also, for example, measure between here and here, do the same check, just to narrow down the location of this big voltage drop. Try again. And there's no voltage drop there. So that tells me that this connection at the battery is fine. Last thing we could check is intermediate, right at this crimp. Ooh, 6.8 volts. So the problem is actually in this crimp. So between here and the battery, there's a 6.8 volt drop. That's pretty nuts. <laughs> How could that be? 
wonder why this electrical tape is here. I just want to do a visual inspection on what's hiding behind the electrical tape. To be honest, it does not look factory to me. Bingo, this right here is the problem. So we do need a new ground cable for this Nissan. Oh, how do we fix this? No parts required. I guess we could shorten it and cut it. This cable is really toast. So let's uh, do the little proof of concept bypass check. Just put a big jumper cable from here to the engine and get it started. All right here's a proof of concept. We're just jumping with the black lead the engine to the terminal and we can still measure the voltage drop. It should be close to zero. Before I start this engine, I want to make sure it has engine oil in it. And it uh, looks like it has plenty of oil, so I'm not too worried about that. Let's fire it up. manifold tick. Point two volts, great. So I love the cars that jump themselves. This is uh, very similar to that BMW we had with a bad engine ground strap. Kind of similar symptoms where the car could jump itself. The battery is fine. So I'm going to shut it down. And one more time. Key on. Now I'm wondering why the needles do that. It probably needs a better ground. Oop. <laughs> okay, I'll let it run for a little bit and should be it. So I'm actually gonna attempt to get this wire off of here and just clean it up and see if we can recrimp it and blow a little bit of solder over it because it doesn't look like the uh, connector is it's, it's just a bad crimp you know if you put an aftermarket cable end on here it'll basically be the same thing so we might as well fix this one just kind of spread these strands out and get all this green crusty stuff off of there, spray some deoxit, and then just re you know, recrimp it. So let me try to do that, and we'll see if it works. Okay, you got a fresh can of deoxit. This is the good stuff. See that copper's looking nice and clean and shiny just little spread the strands clean it up with some sandpaper spray of deoxit I think that should be very acceptable repair for long term reliability
stronger crimping tool here. I should start. <laughs> Let's do a voltage drop from here to the engine again. And this thing should, if everything's good, crank much better because the current flow should be restored. So we're still on voltage. Let's see? Oh yeah, 100%. No more weird gauges. That cranked so nice. There's only 30 millivolts voltage drop. Let's try that again. Remember that's millivolts. And we can do max. I think it was 300 millivolts max there. You want to use the max min feature. Go like that, and it'll just keep the maximum reading on the screen from when you press the button. So, engine off, key on, crank it. Right there, 65 millivolts. That is beautiful. We're done. Thanks all for watching, we'll see you next time, bye bye.